Alison Skirfield, the Chief Executive of the TSA, to uh, make her way to the stage uh, for this uh, final session. I'm delighted to see you, Alison. I was looking around wondering where you were. Um, and Alison's going to uh, start the last of our sessions, which is to sort of outline our ambitions and plans going forward. Alison. Thank you. We get to this time of conference and we think, I don't know about you, but I'm really excited. We've got lots of challenges there, but you know what? There's massive, a massive amount of opportunities. So I, I just want to take some reflection on where we've been as an organization. Paul and I will go away from here with David, um, our chair of tech quality, and start to think about um, where we're going in the future. So I just want a few slides and a few updates and some reflections from ourselves as TSA, but more importantly, I want to engage with you moving away from today and into the next 12 months. So in 2013, we set a, a mission and a vision, and it was people to choose in technology-enabled care to enrich life. Now, that was really bold of TSA in 2013 because we're still in the widgets then. We still used to open the box and ask commissioners whether they wanted this widget or that widget. So we took a bold step in 2013, but we're, we're at that bold step again. So if we truly want to put people at the heart of care and health, we need to really focus back on that enrichment of life. Happiness, go back to Mike at the start of conference and what do people in workforce, how can they really make the difference that will enhance lives in the community? So we've had an ambition to drive transformation of tech and I hope that you've seen over the last couple of days that everybody on this stage is a partner of TSA. The aren't people we just invite along to conference. They've got to have a purpose. They've got to align with what our mission is. So I'm hoping that you've seen that we truly do work in partnership, as Karen said, and we've got to work in partnership moving forward if we're truly going to see the transformation that tech can bring. Citizen-powered communities, a very bold statement looking at population health. When we launched our leadership report, um, earlier yesterday, three key things, and we've talked about it all conference. Data, but what is data? And we'll talk about that. And then we've talked about workforce, and then we've talked about that partnership thing, and it's really, really important. So we've been looking, we do a lot of work in the community, the conference is our showcase, it's where we bring everything you, to, to the two days, but uh, during the year we've looked at the value chain of health and care, we've challenged ourselves in the market, and currently TSA occupy and penetrate about 80% of the traditional telecare market. But it doesn't have that same penetration, as you know, and that wider technology-enabled care. We're starting to take those inroads, but we need to escalate that, and that's our vision for 2025. We've looked at our competitors. There is no competitors in this space driving this forward. It is time for TSA to lead in a wider technology-enabled care market. That's really bold, but it's the ambitions of our chair and president, and it's the ambitions of our chair for tech quality. So we hold tech events, but the leadership events have really given us. We go from the grassroots and the surgeries right to the leaders across the whole system. And the market is changing, and we know that. We've seen that. We've had a cobot on the stage. My days back in Newcastle, when I had to go and do move and handling training because I was a director of service, and I had to take somebody with a slide sheet and a manga with my high heels on, it didn't really work. But one of the things about this cobot is not just about, um, you know, tackling that workforce crisis. It's about protecting that workforce crisis. And it's got a problem there because people, how many sick days do we have when we're trying, when we're going out there and moving and handling? So there's ways of using technologies in a really creative way. But TSA has to ramp up its game and go out to that market and fill this room in the next three years because this is a really, really important agenda. And TSA needs to rethink who it is 
not just a membership body, but a senior leadership focused place that people know that can get some answers. So how are we going to do it? We had our board meetings on the Monday, no pressure. What are we going to do to actually move into 2020 to face some of those challenges and help our sector? We are going to tackle workforce development. I've been sent away to go back in December with a key business plan uh, about what is our ambition and intentions to tackle some of the workforce. We've got level two qualifications, we go out there with CPD, but it's not enough. The workforce is huge and it needs support. We've got advisory services, we're working with LGA, we do lots of things and people are coming to us, Alzheimer's Society and others, to help them with their strategies, help them with their business cases, but help them generally of getting that new proposition and offer. But we need to grow that and understand that in that new market. Data is king. At the moment, I can't tell you the size of the market. I can tell you what I told you when I become a chief exec six years ago, 1.7 million. That's not good enough. Deloitte did a report in 2015 and we refer to it as sector. TSA has to lead. They have to start giving you the information of how this sector is changing. So we're going to start looking at being the owners and the creators of the State of the Nation report for technology-enabled care. The other data initiatives are what Steve and others have talked about. What data? When do we collect it? What do we do with it? But it's about what we do with it to change those lives. So in, October, in December, Steve has a, a key piece of work to do for our board about what that will look like. NHSX have got some five parallel pieces of work about digital social care. Myself and others um, involved in the TSA are sitting in that advisory board and data is really key. Information data, standards, what does that look like? And we will try to work with partners because this is too big a thing for just TSA to do alone. And marketing. And when I mean marketing, this is marketing, PR, sales, the whole piece. How do we start getting these messages out? Five years ago, we had to get a voice for this sector. We've got that voice, but we need to escalate it. So those are the, th the four key things we're going to take away from conference and escalate. Quality improvement is our core value. It's, it's been in every single presentation that we've heard about. Everything from the user yesterday morning and the carers, everything that we need to do, quality and improvement has to be at the heart and centre of what this sector needs to achieve. So David Pearson on the stage yesterday, as a DAS for many years, as a president of ADAS, actually said that when he used to quote his priorities, Quality was maybe sixth, maybe do it, but he gets it. He actually gets what he needs to do with that social care sector to make them put quality and improvement as their key agenda for moving forward. But there's some key things we need to do with the quality standards framework. We need to keep it agile. We need to keep changing it so that we do help the sector to deliver quality services, but continually improve. Yesterday, we launched a brand new quality and improvement board. Now, this is where we bring the sector and the agnostic people and our partners together with key tangible pieces of work that goes through an impartiality committee and then goes back into the quality standards framework. Everybody who attended a conference can participate in that work. And together, we can truly shift this agenda. But to do that, I, haven't, I didn't have the workforce. So the TSA board, as the product owner of tech, uh, the QSF, they've given me the tools to go out and get a new head of quality and improvement, some specialists on Sanders, and specialists to actually write the guidance. So watch that space, and you'll see how we enhance our workforce to support you. 
So that's really, really exciting, and UCAS really drive us to do some of this work. But we need a strategy. We've talked a lot about NHXX having a strategy, this one having a strategy, that one having a strategy. But we need to refresh what we're thinking. So in 2020, we'll come to you as our members and please engage with us because in a process, we won't get our vision for 2025 right. I think what we've heard over the last couple of days is give us lots of insight, but challenge about what that can look like. So please start to engage. We'll have an event in May where we'll bring the headlines of what 2025 will look like. And if you're not in it, we can't win it, so please, please help us to shape the future. And going back to that picture at the beginning of conference when Paul um, talked about our population health and who we are. One of our core values five years ago was to, we are stronger together. What we've seen is the membership of TSA has been, become stronger together. But we need to now be stronger together with the wider health and care market. We have to go out there in partnership with a strong voice. And that's truly what we're going to do over the next um, two to three to four, five years. Please help me with that, because TSA is a very small team with a huge ambition. But I need every single one of you to help me on that journey. And I promise you, we are changing lives. The gentleman at the dinner last night inspired us all to really look within about the good we are doing in that community. And we do enrich people's lives, but we've got a long journey ahead of us. And if we sit on our laurels and say we've done it, which I know we haven't, we won't inspire into the future. So please, please go away from today, inspire in your own organizations, but collaboratively, strongly, together, work with the TSA and our partnerships to shape the future. Thank you. I'm going to wel welcome Paul Burstow now, our conference chair and our president, to summarise the conference and give you some inspiring words to end on. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alison. That sets me up nicely uh, to, to have some inspiration at the end, but thank you very much indeed. Well, I think we've had two fantastic days. We've had a fantastic lineup of speakers, and as Alison has just said, all of the speakers have aligned to a set of messages uh, that we have picked up and we have built on over the last year in the leadership events that we have run uh, to really understand where we need to be positioning the TSA uh, over the coming year. So what I wanted to do was really build on what Alison has just said and just amplify further some of the points that she has made about the ambition that the TSA has for this industry, for this sector, and for the collaborations that we think are essential to making uh, that happen. Now, we've had a great deal of alignment, I think, underscored today around the messages around population health, around the role of data, around the need to look at how we develop our workforce, and in fact, the challenges of a workforce that is not going to be big enough if we continue to see business as usual as it is today. So what I wanted to do was just say a few things about some of the uh, uh, directions. I think the thing about the direction that we've set out today and that Alison has outlined further in terms of the business planning that we are now doing to take the organization uh, forward is very clear. And that fundamentally, that is about enabling people to have a good life. And it is about three broad priorities. We've heard about them pretty consistently over the last two days, around data, around workforce, and around partnership. And we are saying to others, we are ready to partner. We don't expect to come to the table having all of the answers, but we do wish to be at the table having the conversations and contributing with others, that thing which this sector can uniquely contribute in terms of the ability it has to touch the lives of individuals, but also its insight and expertise in the delivery of technology as well. And that's why we said in our call to action that we published yesterday, this is our prospectus, it's our prospectus for others to think about how we can work together with other organizations, and it is our call to action and our specific indications of what we as an organization will be doing over the coming 12 months and beyond to actually turn this ambition 
around smart management of population health to actually improve the population's health, how we make our part in that. Now, we talked about the context of all of this over the last two days, the industrial strategy, the NHS plan, and these are two key components, things that are setting perhaps the backdrop against what uh, a lot of this is happening. And it's worth just saying that we have also had quite some quite stark messages uh, from Jane and others about the challenge we have of why business as usual isn't sustainable. The gaps in terms of the size of our workforce and what workforce we would need over the next few years is, is staggering. And as Jane said in her presentation this morning, um, we're struggling already to actually meet the demand. And the way we're trying to meet that demand is forever dicing up the amount of time that a care worker is providing to any individual to reduce it to a level where the notion that they're actually forming a relationship with the person and understanding them is really hard to achieve in practice. And if that's the case today, given that we know that over the next 20 years there will be a 72% increase in the numbers of people over the age of 80, how on earth can we expect the current system to carry on? It's staggering now, it will have failed, and it will have failed well within that 20 year period. So this is a moment, an important moment to change and to engage and to do things differently. And that's where the data conversation comes in. I think what we've heard about data over the last couple of days is to be cautious, but positive and keen to engage with the question of what data and what intelligence we want to get out of it. And I thought the point that Helena made about the role that uh, machine learning or uh, AI or assistive intelligence can play is another part of how we might start to think about this in a different way. And again, the challenge we had from Karen, which was very much that we shouldn't see this as a technological problem. We should see this as a human challenge of how we do things differently to actually meet the aspirations of our customers, of our patients, of our public. Uh, and that does require us to change. It requires us to have a new learning offer. And Alison has talked about the investments that the TSA board is committed to making and the work that's now being commissioned to scope precisely how the TSA positions itself in a busy marketplace when it comes to training offers to make sure that the unique offer that we can make is well tailored and well understood. And that's something that came through very clearly in our leadership events earlier this year and has come through, I think, in all of the sessions at this conference. That critical role around uh, making sure that we have timely, um, scalable and relevant trainings, probably delivered in blended ways, not just delivered face-to-face -face in all circumstances. And actually, our Tech Stories initiative over the last 18 months, working with ADAS, working with uh, Care England, is also part of that. And we heard, I think, the challenge from Steve Sadler and from Karen Taylor and others on the panel earlier about how we have to help uh, ourselves and our industry and our partners in the wider care, health and care sector on that journey towards digital maturity uh, and readiness to adopt. We also, I think, though, heard just how much we have to keep in mind the human dimension, and that means thinking very clearly about the tech's critical part in that shift towards population health, and it's about how we engage people differently, uh, but also how we get beneath the surface and look to support people's resilience, and that, I think, comes to something that uh, Steve said in his uh, response to a question I asked earlier on about how we repurpose everyday technologies to enable uh, everyday living and not just uh, doing that in ways that results in us dicing up people's lives into small bite-sized chunks. But I think there's a note of caution I want to sound um, in this heady and optimistic world of digital transformation uh, and the use of technology. Uh, there is already an acknowledged health gap in this country and in most advanced countries, but there is also a digital divide. And it's really critical, and I think TSA has to have something to say about this, about how we make sure that in making a reality of this digital opportunity, that we also recognize that in trying to slow the progression of need, we cannot and should not be excluding those who do not have the means either financial or otherwise, of accessing the technologies themselves. So we need to make sure there isn't a digital divide. We need to promote tech equity as well as promoting tech-first approaches. Um, and then finally, to underscore Alison's point, we can't do this on our own. You can't do this on your own. This has to be seen as a collaborative endeavour. Yes, some of you are competitors in this audience, 
but also you are collaborators in making a bigger market that makes a bigger difference for the population of the United Kingdom. That's the prize, that's the opportunity of working through the TSA, working with the TSA to make a difference. That's why we are saying, watch this space. Uh, we have uh, been widening our reach as an organization over the last few years. We want to widen the scope of what we mean by tech to be well and truly beyond simply uh, the existing care line services, which do a great job, but we need to make sure the wider family of technology-enabled care is genuinely in this room, contributing to shaping the work that we do together. And I think then I would just pick up the last four points that came in the uh, answers to the panel at the end. That challenge from Steve about how do we bridge the gap between the everyday technologies and the specialist technologies in a way that is safe but actually allows us to leverage the potential. How do we get our data act together, as Helena said, and how we make sure we don't leave those that are solely reliant on landlines behind because it's the only technology they currently have and that we make sure that we also have uh, a tech offer in place that uh, is recognizing that this is not about the technology, it's about the ways of working differently. I could list the four Ps, because I've written them down, uh, that uh, Karen talked about, but we've heard them time and time again this last two days. Being predictive, being preventative, being proactive, being personalized. Those are what this organization sees as its mission, that's what I think we're all here about. And in Alison Skirfield, as our chief executive, we have a truly great leader who is able to move this agenda forward, championing that cause. And I'm delighted as the chairman of the board of the organization now to say just what a big, big thank you you have from the board for the work that you do, Alison. And more power to your elbow, more power to this organization. We are collaboration ready. We hope everyone else is too. Thank you very much. <laughs>